Now, let's say this comes to value. Suppose I have 1000 now and I deposit it at an interest rate of say 10%. So what will this 1000 become after 5 years? It will become 1000 into 1 plus 10 by 100 to the power 5. 1000. Suppose I have 500 now, 5% five interest rate or 15% interest rate and 3 years. What will it be, become after 3 years? 500, 1 plus 15 by 100 to the power 3. Now suppose, if I am asked what should I deposit now so that after 5 years it becomes 500. Interest rate is 10 years. So, let, let, us, uh, let, let us say that we are depositing x. Then what it will be x? 1 plus 10 by 100 to the power 5 equals 500 or x equals 500 by 1 plus 10 by 100 to the power 5. Now whatever we get the value of x, we say x is the present discounted value of 500 at 10% interest rate for 5 years. Now suppose I have to make a payment of 1000 after 1 year I have to make a payment of 2000 after 2 years and payment of 1500 say after or let's take it to be uh, 3500 after 3 years Now how much money should I deposit now? Interest rate is R0 how much money should I deposit now so that I am able to make all these payments? So let's take the first year. I have to pay 1000 and interest rate is R. So the present discounted value is this. If you look at the second one, I have to pay 2000 and the interest rate is R. So this is the present discounted value to be able to for this payment. And if you look at year 3, this is 3500. This is the present discounted value. So this is the present discounted value to be able to make the first payment, for the second payment, for the third payment. So how much should I deposit now so that I am able to make all three payments? Just sum them up. So this much is what should I, I should deposit so that I am able to make all the three payments. In general, the present discounted value is E1 by 1 by S R to the power 1 plus E2 by R plus R square plus E3 by R plus R2 and so on. So this is the present discounted value. <coughs> now what is happening is we are making different payments every year. Now suppose we have to make same payments every year, then what will the present discounted value be? A by 1 plus R, A by 1 plus R whole square a by 1 plus r whole two and so on. So this will be the present example time. Now, suppose there is a question. That a construction firm wants to buy a building site and the choice between three different payments. There are choice between three uh, different payment schedules. One is you pay 67,000 in cash. The second part is you pay 12,000 per year for 8 years. This is the first choice. The second choice is pay 12,000 per year for 8 years where the first installment is paid at once. So first installment you are paying in the beginning itself. And the third choice is you uh, pay 22,000 in cash now and then you pay 7,000 per year for 12 years. The interest rate is 11.5% and you have 67,000 available in the bank. So when you have 67,000 available in the bank, you can directly pay 67,000 as cash or you can take the second and the third alternative. Now we will choose that option whose present discounted value is the maximum. So if we take at the second option and pay 12,000 for 8 years, so I pay 12,000 first at once, 
Then for the next seven years, I'll be paying twelve thousand. So what is the present is coming to value twelve thousand divided by one minus r, twelve thousand divided by one minus r whole square, and so on. Just twelve thousand one by r to the power seven. This is the present discovery value for the second option. What is the present discovery value for the first option? Sixty-seven thousand. This is the discovery value for the third option is twenty-two thousand and yes cash, and then seven thousand for twelve years. So seven thousand. Um, if I said in the beginning that we'll choose the option whose PDV is maximum, that's wrong. We'll choose the option whose PDV is minimum, so that we pay minimum. So here the PDV of the first option is sixty-seven thousand, and here the PDV of the second option will clearly be less than sixty-seven thousand. But we don't know about these two options. The interest rate is eleven point five percent. We'll put R equals eleven point five percent. We'll calculate both of them, and we'll see whose PDV is the least. Whoever's PDV is the least. We will select that option. Now we know that PDV of second and PDV of third option is greater than the PDV of first option. By looking at it, we can say. But there will be one interest rate for which both of them will be equal. So suppose that interest rate is capital R. For R, both of them will be equal. The both the PDVs are equal and. For less than R, one option will be suitable. For greater than R, one option will be suitable. So, as we change R, we might get different answers. So, maybe suppose for 11.5, uh, we are getting second option. Maybe and R equals for R equals 12 percent. Say both of them are equal. So, for R equals 12 percent, we will be indifferent between these two options. Then, if you think R equals 13 percent, then the option preferred will be PDV three. So. We cannot get a unique answer. It will depend upon the rate of whatever is the interest rate. The options will vary accordingly. Now there is uh, something called investment projects. So when you make an uh, when you are investing, initially the fixed costs are very high. So say the fixed costs are A zero, and then you expect profits every year. So suppose you are getting profit of A one after first year, profit of A two after second year, and so on. So what is the present discounted value of this period of interest is R? A one by one plus R, or this A two by one plus R square. So if we write say A equals A zero plus A one by one plus R plus A two by one plus R square, and so on. So what are these? These are the present discounted value of the profits. First year, second year, third year, and so on. And this is the cost, the initial fixed cost that we pay, which is basically negative. Because if we are taking, if we are taking, this is profit. This is basically negative. Now, when this is the uh, when A is when A equals zero, we say that R is the normal rate of return, internal rate of return. So what is happening is the present discounted value of all the profits is becoming equal to A zero. As if A zero was negative, so whatever the cost, whatever was the initial cost, whatever was invested, that is recovered. So we say that R is the internal rate of 